Okay, if you haven't already, go check out my chemistry video because most likely you're going to take chemistry before you take anatomy and physiology. This, this video is all about AMP1. <clears throat> Tip number one, I'm gonna tell you, go head on over to Facebook and you need to start joining some groups. One, you're gonna take join either ATITs or the HESI A2, depending on what your school requires. Because I go to Miami-Dade College, my school requires the ATITs, so I joined an ATITs study group. I also joined a pre-nursing student group and a the nurses helping nursing students group. I also joined a black nursing students or a black nurses type group that everybody, student or actual nurse, can join. And you know, whatever ethnicity you are, you join that group, you know, like do it for the culture. <laughs> Anyways, um, you wanna join these groups because they're gonna give you a lot of ideas, a lot of feedback, a lot of study tips, tools. They're gonna give you um, a lot of motivation. You can post up your story. Every time you have an, a success, you have an automatic cheerleader. It's amazing. Um, so then I'm gonna direct you to my website, which is nursingjourneybytamarab.weebly.com. And like I said in my last video, the chemistry video, which you need to go check out, uh, when I was starting my journey, all I wanted was information and I wanted to see syllabus and study guides and what I should study. So on my website, um, if you go to the study guide section, you're gonna see syllabi, study guides, PowerPoints, pretty much anything that the professor, any resource that the professor posted, I saved it for myself and I uploaded it to this website. Because even if you don't go to my school, you can still use it as a resource and you can learn and you can get ahead if you want to get ahead or it can help you out if you're currently studying something. So I took, okay, and one thing I learned from the Facebook groups is that a and P, anatomy and physiology, isn't the same everywhere. At Miami-Dade College, um, we take AMP1 and AMP2 as a prerequisite for the nursing program. In AMP1, we have half the body systems, and in AMP2, we have the other half. For instance, uh, our first chapter was chemistry, so listen, chemistry is important. If you want to do well on your first test in AMP, you better get your chemistry down, get your dim dimensional analysis together, learn them cells, you know what I'm saying? And then we studied like the bones, cells, tissues, things like that. It was kind of like the easy stuff. Um, there were a lot of concepts, but it was the easy stuff. Um, okay, so we had uh, lecture and lab. The lecture was more of a uh, act like the physiology part where you learned how everything functioned and then the lab was more of like the anatomy part which is like pointing out the bones and the, the memorization part why do i keep getting interrupted for this video anyways you all need this information so um i was saying that AMP is different at every school, but at my school, um, you take AMP as one course, lecture and lab, um, and it splits up half the body systems between AMP1 and AMP2, which you take in different semesters. In other schools, they have like anatomy is one semester, physiology is another semester. Some schools only require uh, like one course of anatomy and physiology, and I guess it's like in the entire body. Um, so Miami did college. We have AMP1. I took it in the summer semester. Um, it was a quick six week course. Um, if I had to do it again, I would probably still take the six week course. But if you're a person that really needs a long time to understand concepts, or you just, you just, you can't like do a shotgun course, please take it in the regular 16 week semester. Um, but if you're bold and daring, you just wanna get through it, go ahead, take it in the summer, six weeks, you got this. Um, AMP1, we studied cells, uh, tissues, um, the integumentary system, uh, bones, um, the tissue plus the structure. And again, the lecture was all about physiology, how these, um, how the body 
functioned and these different systems, how they functioned, not where is this located and where is that located and name me all the 50 billion bones of the body and all the 50 billion muscles of the body. Um, that was lab. Lab, gosh, <laughs> I got to be in that class. And I'll tell you, um, anatomy and physiology, when I took it, uh, that was when I found out I was pregnant and I actually mistook it for me being um, like I was like losing my motivation and I'm just being lazy and um, I bombed my lab midterm like I think I got like a 60 something it was really bad I was so embarrassed part of it was one I was pregnant and I didn't know it I was exhausted so I, I didn't study properly for it and two the professor told us that it was multiple choice and it turned out there was a lot of fill in the blank and if you don't study how the heck are you gonna fill in the blank you're not gonna know so and, and then her her study guide was off like um, a lot of the stuff in the study guide wasn't even on the midterm so very frustrating but I did what I had to do I turned in I did all my homework every single assignment we had a lot of assignments I turned them all in and I studied my butt off for that final and it all came into a B um, we had a lot of like discussions, discussion assignments, and I made sure that I always chose a part of the body that I had no idea about or that I did, wasn't very familiar with because I knew if I chose that portion of the body that when it came for future studies, that that's something that I would no longer struggle with, that I would not need to study as hard. So um, I remember in one project, in one assignment, we had to choose like um, one of the bones of the leg and um, its function. And I chose like something obscure that I had never, not obscure, but something that I had never heard of before. And um, I did my whole discussion on that. And I'm really grateful that I did because that bone actually ended up on my final and I knew all about it and I was like super grateful. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, for anatomy and physiology at Miami-Dade, I don't know, it's a hit or a miss. Um, and one thing I have to say is that I took these courses like at the height of COVID. So everything was online and teachers were still getting used to being online. Um, and so this might not be the same for those of you who have to sit in the classroom and, and take these classes or even take a traditional online course. So um, gosh, my anatomy one lecture, my professor spoke a million words a minute. It was so lecture heavy. It was like, gosh, do you ever, do you even stop to breathe? But the one thing that really was like clutch that got us through before every single test, he already had all the questions and he wouldn't give us the question, but he would explain what the question was about. So if you wrote that down um, and he recorded his lecture, so you could always go back and like reference it. And so what I did, how I created my study guide for those tests was I would um, use all of my notes from the lecture. And by the way, I didn't use the book in this class either. I used all my notes from the lecture and I, anything I didn't understand, I would go to YouTube to have it explained to me. And um, so I would take his explanation of the questions and I would use my notes and YouTube to relearn or remember or reinforce the concepts that he had already taught in class. And that was clutch. I could say that was like part of the reason I got an A in the class was because I knew what was gonna be on the exams. And his exams were written in a way that you couldn't just Google the concept. Our, our, our tests weren't proctored, but you couldn't just Google the question because the question was nowhere to be found. It was not on Quizlet or any of these places. It's not there. You had to understand the concept. So that's another tip. You need to understand the big picture when it comes to these classes, to anatomy and physiology. You need to understand concepts so that when a question comes at you if it's posed in a way that wasn't posed by your teacher because you understand the concept you'll be able to under you'll be able to answer the question properly and you'll be able to rule out a lot of the incorrect answers because you know that you know this part of it doesn't fit or that part doesn't fit um 
So just pay attention, understand the concepts. Don't try and memorize every single thing or every single word or every single definition. Understand how the systems work, how they work by themselves, how they work together with other parts of the body. Um, and focus on what your teacher emphasizes. Um, and then for lab, yes, memorize. Memorize hard and quiz your teacher. Like, make sure that what you're studying is going to be on the test. And sometimes you'll have a teacher that's like really difficult and like mums the word, but don't be afraid to speak up and ask, listen, I know that we're studying um, the lower half of the body. Please tell me if I need to study all of these muscles in this muscle group or if, are there just gonna be specific ones? So that you can just eliminate certain things because honestly, in six weeks, it is impossible impossible to learn every single bone every single muscle every single part of this of the cell and those little and what they like it's impossible it's impossible so you have to be able to have the guts to reach out to your teacher and say hey what is it that i need to be focused on and then if you don't do well on a quiz or a test, you need to go to your professor and you say, can you review this test with me? What can I do better? What do I, where do I need to focus so that I can do better on the next test? Not only will your teacher res uh, professor respect it, but you will learn better and you'll learn how to study better for the next test. So that's AMP1. Uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna be talking about AMP2. I'm gonna be talking about intro to healthcare and also microbiology. Woo woo.